I'm Andres, the green card doctor, and my goal is to help 5,000 immigrants obtain legal status in the next five years. I also want to help as many people as possible learn and understand more about U.S. immigration. That's why I do these videos. In the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to share with you information that will help you on your immigration journey so that it is smoother and less stressful. In today's video, I'm going to answer some recent questions we've had. If you don't know me, let me introduce myself. I'm an immigrant myself. I came to the US as a child. I moved to Israel as a young adult and almost lost my green card. I had to work my way through the complex and stressful immigration process to, to achieve U.S. citizenship, all this before I was an attorney. So I know exactly where you've been because I've been there. My goal is to make your journey less stressful than mine was, and I want your life to be transformed in a positive way after working with me and my firm. So today's discussion, one, one of the biggest things to happen in immigration this past week, besides the election, was a decision that came out of Chicago about the public charge. Now, Judge Gary Freeman, who is in the Northern District of Illinois, granted summary judgment for the plaintiffs, that's the people that filed the lawsuit, in the case um, in Cook County, Illinois v. Wolf. Wolf, that's Chad Wolf, um, the acting director. Now, the plaintiffs were trying to get the new public charge thrown out, and it looks like they may have succeeded. So, summary judgment is when a judge has a case and decides that there are no factual disputes in question and that that allows the judge to decide on the law without a trial. So when you granted summary judgment, it means you win. His ruling said a couple of things. The Department of Homeland Security's public charge rule violated the Administrative Procedures Act pursuant to a statutory provision. Um, that it is not in accordance with the law and it is arbitrary and capricious. Now, I'm going to explain what each of those things mean and how the judge got to make the decision. Judges look at the facts of a case. They look at current law or the law in place when the facts happened, and they, t and they look at case law. That means decisions that judges have made in the past in that jurisdiction or in other jurisdictions. And they apply the law to the facts and decide what the outcome should be. Of course, both sides argue their position um, and they bring facts and law to their case. One thing to keep in mind is like most of us, judges don't like to lose. To them, losing would be they made a decision, one of the parties appealed that decision, which means takes it to a higher court to review what they did, and that court says yes, what the judge did was right, or no, what the judge did was wrong, and send it back to the judge with instructions. So almost, I can't think of any judge that wants their decision to be overturned. Um, they want to be as clear as they can be about the facts or the law. In a case like this, the judge knew it was going to be appealed. Now, we saw something like this decision in the summer with DACA. The Supreme Court said the Trump administration could not change DACA the way they had because the way they did it violated the Administrative Procedures Act. That decision did not say the Trump administration could never end DACA. In fact, it even said if they followed certain steps, they probably could. But that isn't what they did, and for that reason, they said, no, you can't do that. Instead of following those steps, the Trump administration took the unprecedented step of saying, we don't care what the highest court in the land says, we're gonna do whatever we want. And we know that most of those conservative Supreme Court judges dissented, that means they disagreed with the majority decision in that case. Why does this matter for the public charge decision? Well, now we have Judge Amy Coney Barrett, who's now Supreme Court Justice. She replaced Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and the decision now could be very different. We know that most of the conservative judges, except for Roberts, said in the dissenting opinion that the Trump administration did not violate the Administrative Procedures Act and they could, in fact, end DACA. With Judge Barrett on the case, that may change the outcome. We already know that she disagreed with ending the public charge when it came before her in the lower 7th District Court. And hey, by the way, Chicago is in the 7th District. Matter of fact, just a couple days ago, 7th District said, hey, Trump administration, you can 
continue uh, with the public charge rule until we get briefs in two weeks. So again, we have a decision. Um, it ended the application of the public charge. Then an appellate court said, well, you're gonna be able to do it for a temporary period of time. We don't know whether you, how long that will last or not. As soon as we find out more, we're gonna be sure to let you know. But with a President Biden, he has promised to make this issue go away, meaning he's not going to pursue the public charge rule in the same way that the Trump administration has. So one thing to know about the public charge decision, it took effect on November 2nd. Now the public charge rule initially was to be implemented, well not initially, it was implemented February 24th of this year, 2020. While the current administration is in place, for the next two months, I would recommend that anyone who applied before those dates be prepared to submit the Form I-944 and information necessary for their application, or it could be denied by USCIS. So, if you're applying after November 2nd, I would gather the information, but I would not submit it. Um, the ruling said you did not need to submit the I-944, but hey, now with the appellate decision, you do. It, do you think this is confusing? It is. 100%. So if you filed already and you did not submit the form, gather the information in case you need to. If you did submit it with the form, great. Then you don't have much to worry about as long as you did it correctly and you meet within the guidelines. So as to the actual decision, first, the judge said that DHS's public charge rule violates the Administrative Procedures Act in 8 U.S. Code 1182, Section A, Section 4, Section Big A. Again, it's confusing. It's a long, you can, you can look it up and I'll put a link in the notes below if that's what you want to look up. This section talks about aliens and people who are not U.S. citizens and their admissibility to the U.S. In this case, the judge had originally in July issued a preliminary injunction against the public charge being enforced by the Public Home Homeland Security saying it violated the law. It went on appeal and the seventh district affirmed the injunction saying they agreed with the judge's reasons and findings. And so judge Feenerman said the law needs to be vacated and cannot be applied. That is why he issued the summary judgment. The federal attorneys had admitted if the seventh district upheld the injunction, then the public charge rule was invalid. Second, the judge said the public charge rule is not in accordance with the law. The Seventh Circuit said the public charge is both substantively and procedurally defective under the Administrative Procedures Act. They said the language used in the rule is ambiguous, arbitrary, and capricious. What the court means by that is that there was significant flaws all throughout the rule in both the language and also meaning how the rule is described, but also how the rule is applied. With this reasoning, the court then said that the Administrative Procedure Act itself requires the court to vacate the rule. Finally, part of the, late, the, part of the lawsuit is still continuing. The plaintiffs also argued that the public charge rule violated the Fifth Amendment because it, the Fifth Amendment requires equal protection of law based on race, ethnicity, and national origin. The government can't use the laws because it dislikes certain races, ethnic groups, or people of certain foreign countries. Remember, this was one of the arguments regarding the travel ban. What they are saying with this part of the lawsuit is they are asking the judge if he agrees that the government is discriminating against certain groups um, in, viol in violation of the Fifth Amendment and issue a permanent and requesting a permanent bar against the Department of Homeland Security and its officials from ever implementing the public charge. As a reminder, there has been a requirement since the 1800s, 1882 or so, that someone coming to the U.S. must be able to provide for themselves. We do not think that immigrants should be allowed to come to the U.S. and take from the government. This doesn't happen now, and we don't think it should ever happen. What we do think is that all people, immigrants and government officials, should be required to abide by the laws that are in place without making up their own rules and their own regulations that violate existing laws. There is an orderly way to do things, and this public charge was not done in that orderly way. We talked about public charge. 
A judge said this is this rule is not valid and cannot be enforced across the nation or outside the United States. We talked about President-elect Joseph Biden and how he likely will make the public charge rule go away. How um, they will like you know TPS and DACA will be revisited and likely TPS will be reinstalled, uh, as will DACA. Hopefully, there will be immigration reform and uh, a permanent path to legal status for the Dreamers. We appreciate your support. Until next time, stay healthy and be well.